Alrighty, this is the final of three lightning talks during the Sakai Virtual Conference, and these are fast and furious 10-minute sessions. You get a chance to learn a lot of cool stuff, so I'm going to start out with uh, David Bauer, good friend from University of Dayton. The attendance tool, which is something we in the LAMP Consortium have been using for a long time and are very, very happy to have it. Thank you, David, and the University of Dayton. But he's going to talk to us about the past, present, and future of the attendance tool, and I imagine you'll give us the results of that little survey that you did a while back. Right, David? I'll briefly talk about them, but you know, lightning talk, so I can't go through the whole thing. Um, I don't believe I have ability to share my screen at this time. Hang on, we'll take care of that. We, we are learning that, yep, there you go. Do you have it now? Yes, I do. Okay, good. We are learning that with a lot of people attending, it's hard to find the one you want to promote. <laughs> Okay, I think everybody's seeing that now. Yep, we're good. Go for it. Great. Um, so this will be kind of a, not not very deep dive into the survey because you know it's a lightning talk, but hopefully we'll give everybody a little bit of interest into kind of where the attendance tool is at, where it's been, and and what we're looking at uh, for the future. Um, so I kind of broke it down into past, present, and future. You know, talking about how it started, some changes to the tool over the years, and really just kind of where we're at currently and how that's going to change um, going forward. Um, so the beginning, the attendance tool was created at the University of Dayton. It was in 2016. We were currently on, at the time, we were on Sakai 2.9. So it explains um, probably a lot of the UI choices and technology we used, um, among other things. Um, and it was really created, uh, truly focused kind of on our needs for an attendance tool at UD. Um, and that ex also maybe explains the feature set that we have as well as you know some of the things that show up in the survey over and over again around grading rules for example um that was something that addressed kind of the use cases we had so over the years there really haven't been too many changes to the tool um there's been some small ui updates um from the beginning, there was there's always been kind of some import, uh, performance issues with large sites. Um, it was something that I think we've tried to fix in cheap ways over the years. So you know, some small attempts that have made some improvements, but haven't really addressed the root of the issue. Um, and it's escaping me now. Someone not UD has uh, contributed student photos. You'll see those in the tables. Um, there was an important export feature added. At one point, and um, really just updates, you know, and thanks. I think Sam made most of them, but updates to just kind of keep it working with new versions of Sakai. So the tool as it is now is really kind of the same as it was in um, 2016 when we first, with you know, with some a few exceptions, when we first made it. Um, so what we thought uh, we would do is we've kind of reached a, a good point to think about. Um, how does it change the adoption for the attendance tool has really gone up. Um, and so we want to think about kind of where it's at, what's important, because we know that there's some refactoring that needs to be done to make some improvements. And we want to make sure we keep the things people like and find value in and, um, you know, leave room and flexibility to add in those other um, other new new features and um, improvements. And so we came up with a, a simple five question survey that we sent out. And I think a lot of, uh, we had 60 respondents. So I you know, appreciate everybody responding to that. Um, but five questions really just, have you used any of these particular uh, features in the attendance tool? How valuable each of these um, attendance tool features are? How valuable are some potential features? And those potential ones were just features we heard about over the, uh, over the years and then two open-ended questions at the end of just like what additional features would you like to see added to the tool and what issues um what issues you might be having or that maybe prevent you from adopting the tool or using it um, in your classes and so for the first three questions um again it's not enough time to really kind of dig into the whole thing but i can give you some highlights um the you'll see a lot of similarities between both what's most used and what's most valued and i think that that's pretty typical. Um, and then there's some exceptions where people were talking uh, that there was a lot of um, a lot of responses that were something like grading was very valuable, but fewer people said they used it. And so it was in so that that can provide some insight as well, which is again, something we'll keep looking at. Um, 
but the top five kind of features were being able to take attendance now button where you kind of immediately just start jumping in and taking attendance, um, creating several attendance items in a row. Um, and that kind of comes back into that third question, which is like potential features bulk creating and um, was was really high on that list of people who really wanted to see kind of a way to make uh, you know bulk attendance items. And then the stat summaries, uh, manually grading, sharing comments with students, um, those are all kind of highly used features. Um, and so, and, and even with the potential features, the kind of top two standouts were the, the bulk create and the ability to add custom um, or additional attendance statuses. And so what's interesting about the survey is just like at the super high level is that what people are using, what people are finding value and what people want to see is a lot of the administrative features around attendance. It's not the, you know, the cool, fancy, flashy things, but really about like, I want to take attendance. I want it to be easy. I want it to integrate with the grade book. I want it to grade easily and so on and so forth. So um, it's, it's a good to have that mindset when we're thinking about how to change the tool. Um, for the open-ended questions, there's really like a few common themes. And um, the first one, you know, so for additional features, the, the thing that is said over and over again was just an easier and simpler way to auto-grade. Um, again, that was kind of like the rule creation thing we came up with was specific for our use cases, but there was a lot of, you know, calls for like, I wish I could just say like this status is worth this many points. And once you have 10 of them, you get 10 points or whatever it is um, to just kind of simplify it down to, um, be less cumbersome to set up. Um, the there was a few calls for ways that students could automate, like automatically record their attendance when they're in a site and so on. And that's that's a little bit of a harder thing to address, but uh, something to keep in mind. And then again, this this UI UX, um, you know, kind of call for making the tool simpler, easier to use. And I think a lot of that again goes back to some of the grading rules and auto grading that's um, in place. Some of the issues that you know came up as something that could be addressed is it's not a core tool, so for them that was you know a barrier to use the tool, um, or that it you know maybe doesn't have the same kind of feel uh, as other tools in Sakai. Um, a simple thing of unmarking attendance after selecting a status. Again, this like grading rule setup was cumbersome, and then um, a couple different responses kind of just alluded to the fact that like. I, the attendance tool isn't more efficient than taking attendance on paper, which is just kind of, a, and then like putting in a grade in the grade book or something. And so that was just kind of an interesting thing that I think makes sense to keep an eye on um, when thinking about how to make improvements in the future that what people, at least from the survey responses wanna see is again, the um, efficiency and simplicity of the whole thing. Oh, I'm way behind on time. I'm sorry. So, so future, there's some areas of focus we want to refactor. So I think there's a there's the first piece of this is more of a technical refactoring to fix some of the things that would allow us to make improvements that other people would see. Um, and then, and here is a, you know, because the, the slide deck came with a fancy timeline uh, uh, template. So I used it as well. Um, but here's maybe just a general idea of kind of what might be, um, in the future and you know aiming at that sakai 23 so we're just kind of in this gathering designing thinking about stuff doing some refactoring in the spring making some of those improvements for the summer and then hopefully that'll just tie in nicely with uh 23. so um the last is just kind of if you're interested in it here's the link to the attendance tool in the you know in the contrib repository you can reach out to me via email or however um but yeah thanks there you go and being uh, a, a, we're a big users of the attendance tool. So again, thank you. And and I just, from what other people are saying, uh, the same thing is being said. Did you see the, the comment from Lauren, QR attendance taking? That's interesting. <laughs> um, and I could ask you, David, we'll do it another time, but I could ask you about, you know, students who self-report attendance in, the, in a distance ed world. I can see other people saying, no way, I'm not gonna let them do that. I don't trust them. So 